human rights and imposition and inconvenience or selling arms to the Saudis, what would I choose? I know, I'll pretend I'm Peter Rabbit. <laughs> dishonest answer as well because I don't think she even thinks it's naughty I think what she's trying to do is conjure up an idea of a Britain from the past that's very rural and idyllic I think that's what it's about really well she does feel some empathy but for wheat <laughs> She loves repeating, she loves repeating these little alliterative phrases as well, the strong and stable, and the other one she keeps going on about is uh, the coalition of chaos that came up a lot in the debate, and you sort of think, okay, so she's saying that if you, you know, elect anyone else, there'll be this coalition of chaos, which sounds amazing, it sounds like a Marvel film you really want to see. <laughs> That kind of thing, like obviously most people engage with politics in such a brief way, like uh, including myself. So actually those kind of phrases work really, really well. Yeah. Like everyone does know the strong and stable thing. And actually lots of politicians have done that. Like Winston Churchill used to always say, we'll fight them on the beaches, but once it made sense. <laughs> all the other times, they were like, should we give back the Elgin marbles? We'll fight them on the beaches. Some, some of the dreams that Martin Luther King told people about were disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> My father was naked and riding on the back of a Labrador. <laughs> I think that's why the alliteration thing is so much easier. Is that there's a thing that's there. If she starts panicking, if she gets halfway through a sentence, because she, she's not very good at suppressing what she actually thinks. And you can see like, something, something just fear in her eyes or whatever. Or sometimes she thinks the correct thing to do to be criticised is... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Whatever. And, then, and then she's got one of these things, so she can sort of go, uh, 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 strong and stable. Uh, 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 you want a, a coalition of chaos, or, 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 or do you want us, a, 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 a bunch of bastards? <laughs> <laughs> now, many politicians found themselves being hounded by the same question over and over again. Here's Jeremy Corbyn defiantly refusing to answer an incredibly persistent audience. You said that you would, you, would you use it as second use? Or would you allow North Korea or some idiot in Iran to bomb us and then say, oh, we'd better start talking? You'd be too late. No, of You're course not. You're going to have to do it first, mate. No, of course, of course not. Of course I would not do that. You would allow them to do it. Of course not. Because well, that, that, is, that is why I made the point a short time ago about the need for President Obama's agreement with Iran to be upheld. It's quite important, actually and also to promote disarmament in Korea. That is difficult, I appreciate, but... Impossible. Well... <laughs> Impossible. All right, you the Chinese are trying to do. You are... Yeah. And then they said, did you wink there? And you should be going, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course I would not do that. I don't know, I've got some sympathy for the beetroot-faced men in that audience who were so keen, because I kind of think with Jeremy Corbyn, he does want you to know that he's got such integrity. And I do honestly sort of think that that's the problem a little bit with him, is that people think that he's putting his sense of integrity above national security a little bit. Because he could just lie, couldn't he? Or he could even go, I don't know, because anything could happen, aliens could come and we could need to fire it into space. So he doesn't really know, but he sort yeah. of wants to impose on you what his own morality is. I sort of think they should keep Trident, but just never update it. Is what's more threatening than a really rusty old new. Yeah. You see, this isn't going to be a precision guided thing. We've just pulled this out of the shed. Yeah. 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 We've forgotten what it does. It might go off at face height like a background <laughs> fire. <laughs> it's a bank holiday and we've been drinking. <laughs> but the British people are obsessed with this, though. Yeah. I think, you know, if you remember one of the first things Theresa May did when she became Prime Minister, well, she stood up in the House of Commons and she said that thing about, I am personally prepared to kill 100,000 men, women and children, you know, if needs be. I mean, maybe the question was about school lunches. Yeah. <laughs> she, was just, uh, she, was, she was just trying to get sponsored for comic relief. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, whatever you think about Lib Dem leader Tim Farron, you can't say he didn't embrace the election photo op, even when they seem desperate or odd. Let's have a look at the highlights of some of his coverage. Drifting along aimlessly, <laughs> not really making any impression on the ground. <laughs> so the bus powered by shame. <laughs> he has a key skill for any top politician being able to bake tarts. I'm going to get you to do a little bit of speed chess. Oh, do you okay. think you can do that and answer the questions? I mean, not, not well. No, well, no one's going to judge you on that. <laughs> so is this is about Brexit? Is this, is this going to be about Brexit? Look at that. 
So I'm down to Oh my god, you are checkmate! I've got a pop quizzes. in the bus is fate is in a rear facing seat as well just as a sort of metaphor is I have no idea where we're going <laughs> all I can see is the chaos and havoc we leave behind it doesn't seem like he wants to win the election he seems like he wants to get all of his Cub Scout badges <laughs> so he has crafts and the hovercrafting and the badge for saying gay sex is a sin the badge for saying gay sex isn't a sin you know, all of the badges the Duke of Edinburgh's one. Yeah. It's probably why the Duke of Edinburgh retired, so he didn't have to meet the fucker. <laughs> now, someone who had good reason to avoid... of his conscience. <laughs> yeah. He was in hospital having it removed. <laughs> election campaign where the politicians will even go and campaign. I think it will be like digital avatars in the next election. They'll send a digital avatar around the country and they'll dub over the occasional local reference. It's a pleasure to be here in Doncaster. I sim empathize with your local concerns about unemployment. <laughs> I enjoy your local cuisine of pie and chips <laughs> and methadone. system may it hate us more than we hit it but let's look on the bright side we all need to take a moment to forget politics look into our partner's eyes and take solace take solace from the fact daily basis we manage to suppress the hate we have blink the way they eat the way they sleep the way they breathe the way they exist <laughs> And if we can live with that hate day in, day out, how hard can it be to stifle the hate we have for our political system? So, chin up everybody.
to the next proposition. The media is a huge obstacle to meaningful democracy. Joining us to discuss this, please welcome Mr Nish Kumar. mouthing the words strong and stable. <laughs> With the support of the entire media, how could Theresa May have lost this election? Theresa May could have taken a shit on the cenotaph through a wreath of poppies and then dragged her arse like a dog with worms down the length of Pall Mall and the worst that could have happened is that she'd have to form a coalition. <laughs> Do you find the, the campaign coverage, this kind of, I find it very false, kind of stultifying? Yeah, it feels like more than ever the media has not actually engaged, it's been very passive, it's very sort of observing the process rather than actually interrogating, and then we had this kind of spectacle of these debates that weren't really debates because they weren't in the same room, and it was quite a quite hollow experience, and it's a bit like watching a porn movie where instead of two people having sex, they just stand in separate rooms and masturbate consecutively. And like, at the end, you're a bit like, I've still got an erection, but nothing's really been solved here. Is there a thing, isn't there, where you sort of feel it's like, you need to convey more complexity in what they're saying. So you have these messages like coalition of chaos or strong and stable, and then you, you sort of need to go, well, it's not as simple as that, and give people a more informed view. But the minute you do that, you're in a medium where it's impossible to go, well, it's actually more sophisticated than that, because you've got to cut straight to the next. I don't think, also, I just don't think people do actually want that much information. I think, I think most people just want to grab a couple of things and talk about them angrily after they've had a large white wine. I remember it so tremendously well. It was it wasn't just Boris as a teenager. I had quite a few teenagers at the time. As I remember, there was Boris, there was Rachel, there was Leo, there was Joe, there was the other one. a couple of other ones. Julia and Max. Yes, I've gone through a lot of... What have the other ones done? Well, I won't go into it now. It would take too long. Have they taken us out of Europe? <laughs> it. <laughs> I think that was an accident. Oh, right. Well, that's good to know. Do you mean, sir, that Boris was an accident for his taking? Now, Catherine... Because I like to tell my daughter that she was a surprise. 
Stanley, did you used to be a spy? Is that right? Or you were a well, I'd like to talk about that. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 I mean, I'm not saying you wouldn't have been a good spy. It's in your Wikipedia entry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is true. I had a very brief... I can, I'm allowed to say this now. When I left Oxford, the chap followed me in the street. And he took... And he said, don't have kids. <laughs> What he's saying is, you want to have the most intensive training in Palestine techniques known to man. Well, I tell you, who could say no to that? That does sound like you've killed someone. <laughs> well, he didn't actually die. Now, there's a general election happening here in the UK, but how much of what the political parties are telling us is fake news to keep track of the truth. We're going to start compiling a log of anything bogus, false, or downright dubious from the campaign trail in the fake news Shamifesto. <laughs> the panel must nominate something from the election, and if I think it sounds suitably fishy, I'll add it to the Shamifesto. For example, one thing you might want to nominate could be the whole stupid election. Because <laughs> Theresa May swore blind on numerous occasions we wouldn't be having one. And yet, here we are, having one. Okay, teams? Well, I'll stay with Theresa May. I, I think one thing, I mean, they all do it to be fair, Theresa May has done it more than others in this election for, for obvious reasons, is this thing of saying that they are going out in the country and meeting real people. And Theresa May doesn't, and I don't blame her, because she's so far ahead in this election. It's like she's three and a half, half time. Can I just comment on this? Am I allowed to sort of challenge this? Well, you're on the same team. <laughs> well, watch. I mean, I actually watch this, this is, uh, Theresa May on the watch. Yeah, I'm so really sorry to hear that. No, no, I agree with you. She was warm, she was friendly. Let's have a look at that grilling on the one show. I mean, how hard is it to win a negotiation with your wife? Oh, that's a good question. Well, there's, there's give and take in every marriage, isn't there? Yeah, I, I get to decide when I take the bins out, not if I take the bins out. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, of course, there's boy jobs and girl jobs. There's boy jobs and girl jobs. Yeah, boy and girl jobs. I definitely do the, the taking the bins. I do the traditional boy jobs by and large. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, this is honestly one of the very worst things I've ever seen. I think Theresa May has done on one show. I make a point of always inspecting my own stores. <laughs> <laughs> it is honestly the so upsetting. When you inspect your own stores, do you go, it's a boy job, that's a girl job? <laughs> well, he said to her, he said, uh, oh yeah, we, we, you know, we help each other, I'm very supportive, she's a great lady, I love her, he said wonderful things about his wife, and then he said, oh, but it's true, if you're the type of man who expects your tea on the table at 6pm, you're going to be disappointed. If you're the kind of man who likes his NHS in the bin, you're going to be greatly pleased. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. I don't think any of you being fair. I thought you came very well. When you listen to her being interviewed by the man like I mentioned, Nick Ferrari, you go for it. Nick Ferrari, fantastic interview. And by the way, who can say she's not exposing herself to questions? She was getting questions from you know, people bringing out the Portsmouth. You can't tell the Portsmouth. Well, we can't have that. That's disgusting. That is awful. What's going on in this country? I think I'm the only person among this lot who has actually been elected several times, and I have gone round knocking. And I remember once down in Teenbridge, when I was a, a candidate, I had a lovely assistant, she was fairly well endowed, blonde. <laughs> oh, two, of us, two of us went round together, we were knocking at a door, both of us knocking at the door, and a chap opened it and said, What a pair of knockers! <laughs> That's why you're the only one on the panel that's been elected. Because you're exactly. an older, rich, white man who says things like that. Children's party and Theresa May being the entertainment. <laughs> it would remind me of the dreadful 
there in the 1980s when my parents got confused and uh, for my birthday party had the uh, then uh, chance to exchequer Nigel Lawson doing the entertainment. Uh, and it was a very long, quite brutal afternoon, although I have to say, his balloon modelling is exceptional. <laughs> wasn't a children's party because it went from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. And any parent knows no children's party <laughs> lasts that long. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a children's for sale party right afterwards. Yeah. can't handle it. Uh, yes, the Independent reported the campaign event held in Scotland was publicly listed as a children's birthday party. Well, we don't take anything at face value here on the Fake News Show. Uh, this could indeed be a fake news story to discredit the Conservatives. So we have a look at the crates village hall booking website and their terms and conditions state hire a may only use hall for purpose specified at the time and here's the booking was made for the Theresa May event child party Burnett uh, Alistair Burnett is the local conservative MSP but if you look today at that booking website the child's party booking has been changed to busy <laughs> someone is covering their tracks uh, but Theresa May has been addressing a significant uh, number of people here she is one of those massive rallies that rally does look impressive. Uh, here it is from another angle. <laughs> that bus is the Remain bus, same bus. It's now the, uh, the, uh, the number plate today, it's exactly the same bus. Exactly, it's now the hard Brexit bus. It's nice to see that the bus has gone on the same emotional journey as Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other nominations for the Shama Festo? Catherine. Is it that um, the Labour Party candidates are pretending that Jeremy Corbyn is not their leader? They had a big rally in Wales. That nobody has heard about. Well, obviously, you're going to go to Northern England, all right. <laughs> <laughs> in Northern England, it's all mug one this, mug one that. Do you want to just go down to the shops? Do you need any mug ones? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. Wind up into Betty's for a fatty mug one. <laughs> Boris has an unbelievable ability to wriggle out of trouble, doesn't he? His colleagues, according to the mail, call him the greased albino piglet. <laughs> Let me make one thing just absolutely clear. That is fake. That his, colleagues, his colleagues don't call him that? That is complete garbage. He is definitely not a piglet. Uh, 
Uh, yes, so Comey has been fired apparently because of his handling of the inquiry into Hillary Clinton's emails right in the middle of the investigation into Trump's Russian connections. Uh, in the letter telling him that he'd been fired, Donald Trump said, you are hereby terminated and removed from office, effective immediately. He was the host of The Apprentice for years. He can't even remember his own catchphrase. <laughs> it's, it's inevitable that they, I mean, they, those two, they never really got on because they're very, they're very different people, aren't they? Because, I mean, Trump is a sort of warning person. Um, whereas Comey wanted to investigate Trump for illegally colluding with the Russian government. And those, <laughs> those sorts of things collide. You know. How is Trump going to deal with the problem that all his White House press briefings are being misreported? He's either going to cancel them, or is he going to host them himself? He's going to say, ask me questions. You've got to be able to say yes or no. Don't ask me any questions where the answer can be... <laughs> uh, yes, uh, and now he said this on Fox News. We don't have press conferences, and we do... You don't mean that. Unless I have them every two weeks and I do it myself, we don't have them. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it, first of all, you have a level of hostility that's incredible. You know Sean Spicer. He is a wonderful human being. He's a nice man. Is he your press secretary today and tomorrow? Is yeah, he, will he, he be is. tomorrow? He's doing, well, he's doing a good job, but he gets beat up. Will he be there tomorrow? Yeah, well, he's been there from the beginning. He won't oh. be there tomorrow, will he? <laughs> he won't be there tomorrow. <laughs> that Sean Spicer was said to be hiding in the bushes. And then there was an angry phone call that was attracted to say, oh no, they were hiding near or around the bushes, but not actually in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no footage of Sean Spicer hiding among the bushes, um, but there is a photo of him emerging from them. <laughs> Can I just say a lot of people have a go at Sean Spicer? Yeah. There's no footage of him hiding in the bushes, which no. shows us one thing, which is he's really, really good at hiding. <laughs> Well, if you want to recreate that moment, you can now buy these online. They are offense of Sean Spicer. Trump has been under fire for more like this week. Uh, this little girl. Can you take a picture with me? Donald? Let's just do it. was just a Trump impersonator. That was a fake Trump, but the girl's reaction was real. Um, but still, it's heartwarming, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I make another very boring comment. This guy, this man, is nonetheless still the president of our most important ally. Can't we go a bit easy before we snag him off to him? No. Uh, <laughs> is that quite often the truth really is stranger than fiction. To test how good our panel are at spotting fakes, I've come up with a game called The Fake News Pick and Mix. I've broken three news stories down into pictures. For example, if one story was Kim Jong-un hacked the White House, then we've made up of three pictures. Kim Jong-un hacking the White House. I've jumbled three stories up into a grid of nine pictures that look like this. The Pope, a woman, Steven Seagal, squirrels, the sun, the police, Ukraine, a film camera, and a no entry sign. One of the stories is totally fake news, while the other two are real stories that sound like someone has made them up. To score points, can you find the fake news story using three of the icons here? Yes, Richard. I think I read this. Is, the, is it the Pope? has been banned from entering Steven Seagal during daylight hours. <laughs> okay. Steven Seagal. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd be in trouble if you called him Steven Seagal, but... This <laughs> fellow, I think, is linked with Ukraine. I'm going to suggest that he... He wanted to export squirrels to Ukraine. <laughs> It's a lovely thought, and one that will stay with me till my dying day. <laughs> but no, it's not the right answer. Yeah. Yes. Is it that Catholics have decided uh, that women aren't allowed to be policemen or squirrels or be entered by Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> the squirrels are involved in our fake news story. I saw a story where I believe a woman was arrested for training squirrels to attack her ex-boyfriend. Is Take them too long to cut up all the suits. <laughs> <laughs> that 
story. <laughs> did dupe enough people for internet debunking website Snopes to fact check the story, which is weird uh, when this is how the article appeared online. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the real stories. Uh, Steven Seagal banned from Ukraine as a security risk. Why would anyone ban Steven Seagal? Yeah, I think he's a pal of Putin. And Putin is not, you know, the flavor of the month. No, that's right. Ukraine are unhappy with Seagal's close ties to Vladimir Putin. So that leaves uh, three pictures for our last yeah. story. We have Pope Francis, a camera at the sun. Pope Francis' acting debut, Beyond the Sun, heading to Cannes. And he knew he got the role when he saw white smoke coming from his agent's office. <laughs> We're on the boat, perhaps you can cast your truth-seeking eyes over this clip of His Holiness. How do you think he managed this? Richard, you're both called Richard, this could get confusing. 
Um, well, yeah. Just yeah. look at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, here's the point. That there's one very, very obvious difference between us, and that is we have slightly different classes. That's the picture. Okay. That's the picture we're looking for. Thank you. For the sake of clarity, could one of you be alternative Richard this evening? Sure. Alt Rich. Alt Rich. You're up for that? Okay, you're all rich. Okay. Uh, Catherine, we've had to have the security here tonight after we saw this headline recently. Trump identifies Canadian women as second biggest threat to US after ISIS. Yeah, he's uh, right to be afraid. We start each day with a labat and an abortion. And then we put on nasty women crop tops and we're coming for him. That somebody is. Uh, so how easy is it to spread fake news? Earlier in the week, I asked each of the panel, <laughs> You're right, John. I believe couldn't tell the difference between me and Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> Two Catherines. Yeah, I'm alright, mate. Crack up. Great. <laughs> so, how easy is it to spread fake news? Earlier in the week, I asked the panel to try and spread some fake news about themselves on social media or post a post truth. Of lots of clicks for whoever got the best response. For example, I tried to start a rumor on Twitter that I was going to be the new Doctor Who, which instantly led to this incredible reaction. They made Richard I. Waddy one of the favorites. <laughs>
was, I'm going to wear odd socks today. It feels like that's the way the world is going, and I might as well just get used to it. Socks. <laughs> Are you wearing odd socks this evening? No, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Safely say, Catherine, you posted the best post truth, so you get all the clicks. <laughs> Representing a bit of fake news will emerge from its murky depths and want you to pass in and tell me what it isn't. <laughs> Richard, an unbalanced game of ice hockey. <laughs> yes, it's not the bit of class free when Coldplay say it, and now for something off the new album. <laughs> it's definitely not that. <clears throat> yes, John. My tutors looked at me with such disappointment. <laughs> I was here five minutes ago. <laughs> 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 it's not my birthday party. Oh. It's actually quite a good turnout for a birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's definitely not white bits, things for people to stand on. Those are people, but they've just got their hoods up. largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. <laughs> I mean... Well, let's have a look at the uh, comparison with the Obama inauguration. And you can see it is different. I feel badly for Sean Spicer, because, like, he's gone out to speak to the world, and his boss has just told him, oh, and remember, up is down, and dinosaurs were buried in the mountains by God. Go! And he's just like, ah, it's an inauguration, period. I remember my inauguration period. I was 14. Who in particular is Donald Trump accused of being fake news? CNN is his uh, bit more. Mm. Uh, yes, it's only press conference as uh, President elect Trump refused to answer a question from a CNN reporter. Let's see. Look, President elect, can you give us a question? Don't be Can you give us a question? Don't be Can you give us a question? I'm not going to give you a question. Can you stay casual? You are fake news. <laughs> it's not long before he's going to go, la, 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 I can't hear you. Why are they dancing in him? Why is he so annoying? The things he says. <laughs> yeah, and they've done it on the screen. For example, Trump calls Obama founder of ISIS, brackets, he's not. Introduce it to the debate. Go oh, good use of the bus. That's all right, just got the text. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, what other alternative facts has Kellyanne Conway been putting forward? The Bowling Green Massacre. Yes. <laughs> What's wrong with the Bowling Green Massacre? Well, there's a lot of people saying it didn't happen, but it did happen. And if anyone was at the 2001 World Indoor Championship final in Great Yarmouth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find when uh, uh, Paul Foster beat Richard Cossey. I, I mean, Cossey took the first set, but the next... I mean, if that wasn't a bloodbath, I don't know what was. <laughs> Kellyanne Conway made the claims in response to criticism of Donald Trump's so-called Muslim ban. Trump's executive order banned entry from the following countries, Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Syria, Sudan, and Yemen. He clearly doesn't know what he's doing. He missed off Islamic State. <laughs> she blamed the press for the fact no one knew about the Bowling Green Massacre. Uh, she said most people don't know that because it didn't get covered. I mean, uh, it was a thing. It was a thing. Bowling Green was too... I think Iraqi guys who got arrested and jailed. So it's a, you know, it's a thing. But they didn't do anything, they didn't kill anyone. It was covered with a few blanket coverage when it happened years and years ago. So it wasn't, I think she's even lying about the thing that she was lying about mm. that, that was covered. But literally, there are so many layers of lying. It's like a, it's like a, a what's those, a, a mill foy of lies. <laughs> Someone's after the very good job. <laughs> Come on, Channel 4 and use the word mill foy. I see you. Yeah. I do. <laughs> 
comment got rightly outraged. Citizen Sullivan tweeted, Kellyanne Conway's comment about the Bowling Green Massacre was disrespectful to all who died that day. <laughs> 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 the architect of the Muslim ban is alt-right figurehead Steve Bannon, who is the White House's chief strategist. Steve Bannon said in an interview that darkness is good, Darth Vader, Satan, that's power. Though lawyers for Darth Vader and Satan have issued a statement distancing themselves from this <laughs> On the right side, under the Constitution, Donald Trump can only serve for a maximum of eight years. So there won't be a third Reich. Sorry, term. I mean, I think we should go alt-right, though, because the fans are there for the taking. They don't have a lot of celebs on that side. So if, if you go alt-right, all of a sudden, you're going to sell out your tour, get loads of new new lovely friends and followers i think i'm gonna do it i'm just the woman to do it i'm very white what are you doing with all your shit <laughs> <laughs> that wolf's not gonna count itself steven <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you think hurling is hurling that's right. <laughs> yeah. i need to be careful because i have taken a genetic test for something else and it came back too uh, Irish, like 91% is not too normal. Irish. What happens? Does it go green? It's just... <laughs> it, goes, it, goes, it goes black with a white top. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just not normal. Most people will what say... It's not normal. Did the doctor say you were dangerously Irish? <laughs> <laughs> There's Over. too much crack in this one. <laughs> traces your mitochondrial DNA back hundreds of years, and most people will have a little bit of Greek or a little bit of Asian, they'll have, you'll be maybe 20% British. You were British. like two leprechauns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now we're back to Jedward. Who <laughs> uh, also does the front line, and which other organisation is? Failing New York Times. Oh, Failing New York Times, send a go out quite a lot, they read it every day. BBC. BuzzFeed. Oh, BuzzFeed. Uh, yeah, anyone know why he was so cross with BuzzFeed? They I remember this is a pre-Waterstead show. This is not, is it? It is, 8 yeah. o'clock. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> BuzzFeed released some documents from a former MI6 agent uh, alleging that Trump was vulnerable to blackmail by Moscow because of some rude things he did in a hotel room with some Russian ladies. I didn't really understand Golden Chat because I always think it... <laughs> I, when I think of a shower, I, to me that's over six foot high. <laughs> <laughs> some freelance work for the KGB. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Bake Off. <laughs> no, that's, that's the Great British Shake Off. <laughs> uh, Vladimir Putin doesn't believe the story. Uh, what Putin said was, this is an adult man, first of all, and apart from that, a man who for many years took part in organising beauty contests and has communicated with the world's most beautiful women. I find it difficult to believe that he immediately headed off to the hotel to meet with our girls of reduced social responsibility. <laughs> Adding, although they are the best in the world. So, he said that. He said that. I was next door with an Irish girl, fling excrement at war. There was no Canadian some of these women. I said I want 90, 91% Irish. They said there's no such thing. <laughs> so, at this point, we have 100,000 clicks. But in the lead, with over 700,000 clicks, it's Richard and Alt Rich. Diplomat. 
diplomatic intervention. The Americans tried, as Americans do. Maybe now they'll finally see what we're up against. Well, what about us? Was there nothing from us? I understand it. No one wanted to make it any worse for her. She was going to be shot! How the hell could it get any worse? Stop yourself! Let me give you my assessment of the situation. I think you should shut going into a second winter when we weren't supposed to have the first. And there's no end in sight. But nothing gets the shoulders of the wheel like an executed nurse. That'll reignite the fervor. Everyone behind the war effort, no matter what. So, not a wasted death, then. It meant something. Lighty ticket. Of course I kept it. <laughs>